Welcome to another episode of Spiritually Powered Horsemanship, where Cindy and Laura, two very different women from two very different backgrounds, share how they are alchemizing hearts and horses for a deeper connection with life. One of our deepest intentions on this podcast is to keep it real, because in our horsemanship journeys, there's no black and white, nothing is for sure, and anything can change at a given moment. So in that, we're always going to share with you our intention for an episode, but Cindy and I are pretty good at calling each other forward and exploring something out of left field when we see that that person needs that support. And we're going to take you along on that journey. So if it happens and we take a right turn and end up somewhere else, we trust that it was meant to be. As you listen to this episode... If you're finding yourself having an aha, a new awareness, or just really enjoying the conversation, please leave us a five-star review on wherever you're listening to us. This is the best thing that you can do to help us get this podcast into the ears of more passionate horse people. Hello, everyone. Today's podcast is going to be about energy. And since we are the Spiritually Empowered Horsemanship podcast, we are not only going to just talk about the energy that is within us and around us, but we're also going to explore how energy is used as a healing modality with our horses. And the first thing that I want to share with everybody is horses are masters at sensory awareness, which means all of their six senses are highly attuned. And when I say six senses, I always, I always forget one. So here you go. Here's the test, Laura. If I forget, you got to no pressure. fill in the blanks here. So they have their sight and sound and smell and taste. And they have their feel, their tactile feel. And the sixth one is their energy, their intuitive abilities. Then that's not instinctual. That's different than intuitive. Intuitive means that they have the ability to feel what's going on within their herd members. They, they, and, um, Okay, we're just going to go there. They are very good at reading each other's minds. They're very good at reading our minds. I am an animal communicator. And the way that we do that is through psychic abilities. So yes, horses and animals are very good with psychic abilities. So that sixth sense which is their intuitive, to me, falls into the energy realm. Would you agree, Laura? Absolutely. It's, you know, there's an energetic field around us with everything. Yeah. And in our traditional societal structure as humans, we are completely turned off to it. And horses are completely tuned into it all the time. Yeah. And that kind of goes back to some of our other um, episodes where we've talked about the awareness. Yeah. Self-awareness, horse awareness, energy awareness. I feel like that plays really strongly into the energy around us. We all have our energy bubble. For humans, it's when you spread your hands out to your side, that is your energy bubble all the way around you and above you. And for horses, their energy bubble is if you put your horse's nose 
the length uh, uh, and if you put the horse from nose to tail and then touched on the nose to the their tail out so it's a horse length around them so we walk into their bubble pretty quickly and then when you have horses who live in a pasture together they all have their bubbles and then they have the herd bubble mm -hmm. and then that goes to that intuitive that's how they feel a disturbance and what i'm getting this really funny visual is when you see a flock of birds flying in the sky and they're completely in unison, they're flying straight and they bank to the left and they bank to the right and they dive down and they dive up. They are all of their energies are coming together to create one synchronicity within all of them. And so herds of horses do the same. If you watch a herd of wild horses out in the open range, they do the same thing. So when we walk into the enclosure with our horses, and I'd love to have you guys play with this. When you walk into your horse's pen, get a visual in your mind's eye of where his bubble or her bubble is, and then walk towards that bubble and watch their body language. Does that ear come on you? Do they turn and look at you? Do they turn and face you? You know, just start playing with the bubble. And uh, I do that a lot with my clinics is I will have people get in there and find out where that bubble is. First, they learn where their bubble is. And uh, Laura and I were talking before we started the episode of when we're in a group with people and the people we know and love, they can walk right up to us. We're like face to face, you know, like a hands width apart from each other and we're talking and then somebody else comes walking up. And if you put your hand out in front of you at the tips of your fingers is your bubble. And as they start to approach that bubble, you kind of rock back. Mm -hmm. And then they walk closer and you politely step back. You know, <laughs> COVID made us really aware of that. Yes. <laughs> But it's funny because I will catch myself doing that. And I actually catch horses doing that. Like they'll be okay with certain people walking up to them. And then other people, as they get closer to the horse, usually trying to catch them. But even if they just want to pet them or something, the horse will always just stay that horse bubble away by just taking one or two steps back. Yeah. So, you know, actually, I saw a perfect example of this today. There's one horse property that I drive by to get into where Andre lives. And two horses live there and they don't do a whole lot with them. But for the most part, when the family members are out there interacting with the horses, the horses are calm and happy and it all looks good from a non-looker driving by who doesn't know anything. But today as I have to put in a gate code and the pasture for those horses is right there. And I notice one of these horses is running around like I've never seen it before. And then I see the girl is in there with a halter. And I was mm -hmm. like, hmm. this is just piquing my interest, my, like my judgy horse girl interest. And then I see the farrier's truck. Oh. And this horse who stands there all day looking relaxed and happy and like, there's nothing remarkable about these horses in terms of, oh, those poor horse. This horse's body was just a ball of tension. His bubble was the whole damn paddock, and please don't come in it. And he's running up and down the paddock, and she's chasing him with the halter, and the farrier's standing there tapping his foot. And I, I did not see how it resolved. I was just moving on. But I was like, yeah, that horse was just everything in its body his head was sky high his back was arched everything was tense he was saying stay out of my bubble i was like man i think maybe he doesn't like the farrier 
Well, what's really interesting about that is you just kind of segued us into the next level of energy is she came in with a different energy. Yeah, for all we know, she wanted to have that horse caught before the farrier got there and didn't get it done. Or maybe she got stuck in traffic. Or the farrier was earlier. Who knows? Right. And um, we don't know how this horse is when he's standing to be done with the farrier, you know, how he stands to have the farrier work on him. And we don't know if the farrier has good energy. Right. So there's all these different aspects of energy that made that become the perfect storm. Yes. <laughs> and I have, you know, Dakota, um, I really had high hopes that she was going to be one of my main partners. Mm -hmm. And because she doesn't like the start that she had under saddles, she gets real worried when she's under saddle. And so when I go out there to do waters or feed or whatever, man, she is in my back pocket. She's a cuddler. So she wants to cuddle. She wants to be loved. And I show up with a halter and she like, she, you can see her. She puts her head up and she looks at me and she looks straight at my hand and I'm not going to hide my halter. So as soon as she sees the halter, she's like, you can just see her go, oh shit. And she starts looking left and looking right and looking forward and planning her out, you know? And I'm like, oh my God. So she, her energy changes immediately. Yeah. And I have to work really hard to not let that affect my energy. Yeah. I have to work really hard to just leave my heart open and my energy bubble wide open and inviting, even though oh, sometimes it makes me really mad because I have been that person with my farrier up here watching going, hmm, I wonder how long she's going to work at it. And, you know, being a horse trainer, if I get in there and I start and she starts getting super bad and super evasive. The last thing I should do is turn around and walk out. Right. So it's that. Ooh. But you also want to let it take the time that it takes. Yeah. So like you don't want your farrier to fire you. Oh, I'm looking at my farrier going, you know, if this, if we don't get any more horses done today, I'm catching her. Are you good with that? He's like, I'm good with that. You know, so my farrier has good energy. <laughs> And that's a huge thing is my vet has good energy. Anybody who comes into my horse's space has good energy. And I'm vetting that before I'm subjecting her to it. And that's a huge part of my honor and my stewardship of my horses. I never want to put her, you know, I never want to go to a clinic with a, facilitator who doesn't have good energy I I honor her sensitivities by making sure that we're an energetic match for everyone in our sphere mm -hmm. yeah and uh you know I think we should talk a little bit more about the energy because like Laura said so many of us who are really, and I don't know if you're listening to this station, if you're this person, but you not, might know somebody or you might have been that person because I, I was for a long time. I was really in this physical world of raising my kids and doing a good job at work and being a good mother and being a good wife and making sure I was a good horse owner and just so in my head and in this world, you know, practical, this, logical, tactile world. doing. Yes. Yeah. Very, the doingness of life. And, um, when I'm with my horses, time stands still and I'm being with my horses. And so I, I, before they lived with me and even now I can be all spun up and all tense about whatever, and then go out and just sit with them and be with them. And 
I get quiet, I get grounded, all of the things disappear because I'm in their energy of harmony and togetherness and just the simple pleasures of being. Yeah. And so they help us. That's why we all love them, right? We go to the barn. I'm going to the barn. I'm going to my happy place. <laughs> I'm going to get therapy. I'm going, you know, we, we know that they're doing something to us. But what do we do for them? How do we, we don't want to be energy vampires. Mm -hmm. We don't want to go drain our horses. We don't want to vomit all our emotions or our negative stuff on them. How can we, like Laura said, be good stewards for our horses? How can we be good partners and have that relationship that, you know, it's the affinity sign where it's about them and it's about us and it's about them. It's that equal exchange of a relationship. It's not giving too much and it's not taking too much. And that begins with, are we in our body mm -hmm. where we're grounded and our energy is smooth and flowing or are we in our head and it's like, pew, 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 pew. I mean, have you ever been in a, in a setting and that person comes in the store or a meeting or something and they come in and just the, the whole energy in the room changes. Yeah. Or let's go back to the horses, that one horse who's, who's, um, had so I, and I'm not gonna, uh, this is not a negative thing about the performance industry, but a lot of performance industries do not take into account the emotional well being of the horse, and the horse gets emotionally fried, they're spun in their brains. Yep, they're spun tight. And they don't know how to cope with it, so they crib, they weave, they pace. They paw three-foot holes by the trailer. Uh, they stick their tongues out of the side of the mouth and literally suck on their tongue like a pacifier. Yeah. Put that horse in with a pasture of horses who are used to having pasture life and a well-balanced life. Bring a racehorse into an environment like that. And what will happen is that that racehorse or that horse that has displaced energy is going to come in like a tsunami in the ocean. Yep. It's just going to take that whole energy and just throw it all over the place. And all of them are going to cluster away from him, but they still hold the space. Mm-hmm. Because they are in a big energy ball of that pasture. And they might run him off. They're going to set boundaries and all that. But they're going to hold that space. And within a week to two weeks, you're going to see a different horse. Yep. At least in that pasture. Absolutely. And the healthier the herd, the more quickly and less dramatically that will happen. Yeah, and then we have that one sad component. Yep, you got it, Laura, the owner. Yep. Because the owner's going to come put that halter on and take that horse and put it right back to work unless they themselves have chosen to do something better for them and their horse. Yeah. And that's a whole nother topic, kind of, huh? It is, but okay, so I want to talk about my evolution of this because it's very relevant here. Um, my first horse, his name was Double Trouble. Him, he and I were both very unregulated, but he was in a herd of 60 that helped him regulate. And that herd, I would also go, it felt good to be in that herd, and I didn't know why. They were helping regulate. Horses can hear your heartbeat. They can attune to you. 
and they can help your nervous system regulate in their presence. They can hear it and and they can feel it too. They can feel it and they can match to you and then bring it down. Mm -hmm. And he was such a giving caretaker that I was an energy vampire to him. And I would take all my shit to DT and he would unwind it, take it in, expel it out and fix me. And I didn't know that that's what I was doing. I was living in my, my doing logical tactile world and I just knew that when I spent time with this horse I felt really good and in his working on me he kind of learned how to do it for himself too and then we figured out oh this time in nature together it regulates us both and we had a great routine and then I got MJ and I expected it to be the same and when I'm an energy vampire to her she completely shuts off and she does it to other horses, too. She's like, I'll be in it with you, but you're not dumping it on me for me to process by myself. You know, she'll turn around and she'll bite me. She'll walk away. She's like, no, ma'am. <laughs> and I didn't understand at the time. Well, I just thought, oh, this horse doesn't like me. So I'm just going to keep in the doing. And I'm going to train up a nice horse and she's going to be for my husband. And it wasn't until I started on my own spiritual journey separate from horses and started bringing that work back to her, learning, oh, this is what it feels like when I'm in my head. This is what it feels like when I'm down in my body. This is why this is happening. And really getting with that, that my relationship with MJ just clicked on a more powerful level than I ever could have imagined because she needed me to be aware of what was going on. She wasn't going to just do it for me like DT was. So I had these years of doing it without being aware of what was going on. I just knew that it felt good, which I feel like a lot of people are there. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I had this horse that was like, no, 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 no. And now, I mean, my life is so much richer. My awareness of myself and my energy and the energies around me is so much more powerful because of this journey that she led me on. So how how do you know she's responding to your energy? Mm, there's different things that happen. Um, sometimes I feel just an incredible like kinship with her where we're, we're not doing anything like today I was cleaning and cutting dead hoof away from a really gross abscess and everything went you know I'm just down on my knees with her hoof on my knees and I'm working away and I feel this little brushing on my forehead there's no resistance everybody's just working together and we're not it's just a, hey, I'm here. I'm here completely in the moment with you and you're here completely in the moment with me. And we're not doing anything of note, but it's also just so powerful to be together. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it's more of a direct tap of energy. Like, hey, are you going to be here with me today or not? That's kind of the only level of accountability she'll have and I'll do it to her too if she's distracted hey it's a it's a reaching out of heart energy with a little bit of a bump so in order to be able to begin to if you know if you're new to this whole concept of energy I, I I'm guessing I'm almost willing to bet that some of the things that we have described here you can relate to you yeah. know like you go you go to the barn and time stands still and all the worries that you came to the barn with all of a sudden they're, they're not there you know yeah. and then you are lost in the moment and you feel peace 
you feel good. And then the next thing you know, you look at the clock and it's like, oh my God, where did all the time go? Yeah. I better get going. And so you leave and you feel so good. And maybe you just were there dropping off grain and cleaning and, you know, you didn't have time to ride or anything. You just hung out or you went for a ride and then you get back in the car and you're just like, oh, that was the greatest. Like the other day, last Saturday, everything went perfect. Played with two of my horses. They went out in the public with me. We did things. Everything went perfect. And we're driving home and you're so happy and it's so great. And then you pull in the driveway and it's like reality. Yeah. The re-entry process. Yes. <laughs> Why can't I just stay out there in that paddock forever? Where is my joy going? Wait, come back. I want to go back and be with my horse. Because you're you're back into, you know, all of our responsibilities and our energy can shift based on where we are and how we think about it. Yeah. So We don't, we don't, we're not at its mercy. It's not in control of us. Yes. We, by the way we think and the emotions that we allow to flow through us and the chatter that's going on actually influences our energy but by breathing and watch horses how they do it they get scared something startles them ah! and they get away from it and they turn and you watch what they do they reset they self-regulate yep. they get away they shake it off they take deep breaths they get back down into their parasympathetic nervous system they start eating grass and life is good again we can do the same thing oh. you know recognize the mind chatter that's bringing up the emotion of frustration or anger or fear or anxiety recognize it how do you get your mind off of it well i learned this and it's so powerful when I learned it many years ago, is focus on your breath. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this in a lot of episodes. Focus on filling your lower abdomen with breath and breathing it all out. Because when you focus on doing that, your mind can't be wandering and thinking about emotional and all that because it's focused in on your breathing. It's called oh. interrupt the pattern. We do it with our horses all the time. Well, I don't know, we don't all, but it's called interrupting the pattern. Yeah. You know, it's- And a that's your next level with your horses. Everybody's horse is doing energy work on them, whether they're aware of it or not. And that's why it feels good to go to the barn. But if you want to take this to the next level, you will start tuning in, becoming more of aware of it and controlling your energy and the electromagnetic field that you are putting off to create a more inviting and deeper connected relationship with your horse. Yeah. So, you know, uh, what makes a good, good relationship with your horse is if you can be that inclusive leader. Yeah. And the first step to becoming an inclusive leader is being the best leader you can be for yourself. Yep. And so when all of that stuff starts happening inside of us, winding us up or sucking all our energy out, we get to that, that all-knowing, powerful being that we truly are. And then we get layered with all the labels and all the experiences, and that feels disempowering. But at the core of who we are, we are powerful beyond belief. And by taking responsibility to pay attention to our breath and let those things that don't serve us or our horses go by and choose a different emotion, a different thought, a different 
behavior, a different action. That is the first step to becoming an inclusive leader. Yep. And that's owning your energy. It is. Yep. And you're not throwing it all out there. You're not sucking it all in with your heart closed. Don't, I'm scared that anybody to let anybody in. You're just like, here I am. Look at me shine. And your horse goes, oh, there you are. I want to be with you. You make me feel so good. That's it, you guys. We want to challenge you. Can you make your horse feel as good as your horse makes you feel good? Yeah. So how does that happen? We're going to give you a couple little tips before we close this episode. I am a Reiki master teacher. And Laura is an energy master. Okay. I've gone through that training. Laura has awakened that energy within that we all have. And when I first became a Reiki master teacher, the label felt good. And mm -hmm. I've got energy and I can put my hands on and I can help you heal and all this stuff, right? And then I started thinking about the energy that I feel from others and the energy that I had before I got Reiki attuned. And I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. Reiki attunement brings your vibrational frequency higher, but we all are energy beings. We all, when we put our hands on another being and they go, oh, your hands feel so warm. And you feel your hands in the palm of your hands, you feel like tingling or like a rotating circular energy ball in there. That's energy. So we all have the ability with an open mind and an open heart and a pure intention that I am going to offer the universal energy through my body out into the world to you. I'm not giving you my energy because sometimes it sucks. I don't want you to have it. I want you to have better yeah. than what I can give you. So I'm going to open the top of my head, my crown chakra, and allow my, the universal energy to flow through me, out through my hands to you. And how do we do that? How can you believe that? Well, I'm going to help you prove it to be true. What I want to have you do is put your hands um, shoulder width apart facing each other. And notice what you feel, it's going to be in the palm of your hands. Notice what that feels like. And then ever so slowly start to bring your hands closer and closer together. And when you, and sometimes close your eyes, take deep breaths. And as you bring your hands slowly together, there's going to be a point where you feel like you have a ball or a water balloon between your hands and you can feel it like you feel a little resistance and then you push on it. You can feel it give a little bit. Now, for some, that will be like, for me right now, I'd say that's like volleyball size. For some people, it's it's cantaloupe or grapefruit. And sometimes they get their hands together and they can't feel anything. Well, I can tell you, if you get your palms together, you've missed it. You were in your head. So take deep breaths and drop down into your, your power center, which is your belly button area, three inches below your belly button, or into your heart. And go back to shoulder width apart. Close your eyes. And then slowly, sometimes it helps if I spread my fingers apart. Sometimes it helps if I keep my fingers together, but my thumb away from my hand not tucked up against my hand that makes it rigid so for a minute even do that put your spread your fingers out then put your fingers slowly together you can feel a difference there and then 
put your finger up against your hand, do you feel the tension? Don't do that. Open that thumb up. Then bring slowly together until you feel a little bit of resistance. And feel it. Don't think. Because sometimes we want to go in our head and go, oh, that's so cool. And then it's pop, gone. <laughs> and that's okay. Just go right back to your shoulders and play. So I wanted, would encourage you, play with it. And then when you feel it, that's your energy ball. Can you move it? Like if you were holding a real ball, can you move it around? Can you push on it? When you get really good at this, Laura and I have played this before, can you grow it? And that means slowly bring your hands out and watch that ball of energy expand within your hands. So play with this. And if you can, play with this around your horse and watch your horse be amazed at what you're doing. So that's the energy ball. And then the next thing that you do is if you put your hands now still up and shoulder width apart, but palms facing out. If you put your awareness into the palms of your hands, for me, it's kind of a pulsating feeling with a little bit of warmth. What do you feel, Laura? Yeah, I would say it's like radiating. Yeah, kind of like a pulsating. Yeah. yeah. So imagine that in the center of the palms of your hands are your energy points, and they're taking and pushing energy out, but they're also receiving energy in. And when you've got time to just be around your horse, start like put your arm out so your fingertips just touch their shoulder then bring your hands back and up towards your shoulders with the palms facing them breathe and just focus on energy flowing from your hands and slowly go towards your horse until you feel the energy ball you'll feel it it, it, and for every horse and every human, it's at a different space between the two of you. Now, for horses who aren't used to energy work, they may not want you to touch them with that energy and, and don't. Just hold your hands there and let them get used to it. Just like you, if you've never felt your energy and you do this exercise, you're going to be kind of blown away. It's going to be kind of like, oh, my God. No way, I'm making this up. <laughs> Send us a message on our podcast site or our Facebook group because we want to hear. We <laughs> want to know what was it like for you. This is fun stuff. But the more that you do energy work on your horse, the more your horse receives it. And now Laura is going to take it away because she does energy work on MJ all the time all the time and it, it started from a real place of desperation and now it's become something that's just really joyful for us um i was rehabbing mj down at a boarding facility close to my house because she needed to be in a more contained space than my barn that i love could offer and my best guess is that there was some domestic stuff going on at the neighbors that was like right next to their paddocks that created some really nasty energy and when I went and I um, toured the place, all the horses were super relaxed and down and sleeping. And I mistook that for happy horses. But what it really was, was emotionally exhausted horses that went into this like deep state of oh, shut down during the day because the nights were so terrifying for them. Um, but I didn't know that. And so I brought MJ there. And then all of a sudden, my very well-trained, very well-adjusted happy horse became an emotional wreck. And no amount of groundwork or training practices was changing that. And so I had to 
go to my, I was getting deregulated because I was like, apparently I am not as good of a horse trainer as I thought. And so I had to start going to my energy work and setting my energy right. And when I did that in her presence, she started coming down too. And then I got interested and I started playing and I called in some energy workers that taught me how to do this. And it became a necessity that I went there every day and helped her regulate her energy. And every single horse at that facility would wait for me to arrive and tune into us. And they would all start releasing and they would all tune in. And it became a whole, even though we were all in individual paddocks and separated, everybody was there for that. And I really saw how powerful it could be. And it still wasn't a healthy system because I would leave and all that tension and whatever the hell was going on there that wasn't healthy would come back. But I could make a huge difference for those horses in the time that I was there. And I didn't do anything of note. No special equipment. No, you know, no tying. If you want to participate, you participate. If you don't want to participate, fine. There were days when MJ was too up in her head and I, she didn't want to come back down. But the horse in the paddock next to her would stick his head over the wall and ask me to work on him. It was fine, Wilbur, I'll work on you. And then the next thing you know, MJ would come up and join the session and receive the energy through him and instead. And so all you're doing is you're taking your hands and activating that energy like Cindy taught you and you're sending that energy out into the horse. And the moment I feel myself becoming ungrounded, I just go back to that. I have to be grounded the whole time. I can't allow the horses to use me as an energy vampire or I will feel super drained and get sick and have issues. Like I can't take them on. I'm just facilitating their release. So you're not actually fixing them or healing them. Mm -hmm. You're just allowing, you're, you're showing up with pure intentions and an open heart. Yes. And no ego driven agenda. And then you're actually receiving healing energy as it flows through you out into the horse. Yes. And they're not tied up. They're not. And the more I do this with MJ, the more she is extremely targeted in what she presents to me. What does so, that mean? The parts of her body. And so all of our horses, they have, just like you and I, we have energy centers and energy lines that run through our bodies and it's all attached to physical and emotional. And I used to want to, yep, and mental. And I used to want to study it all and know it all. And I've done some of that and I'll go back into it. But you don't have to know what exactly what's going on or why. Just know that, you know, when they present a part of their body or they shrink away when you get toward a part of their body, there's a reason for that. And so you hold the space for it. With MJ, a lot of times she'll be resistant at first to something new that's happened. And I'll go and I'll say, okay, so let's say she's um, super resistant to a part of her neck and she presents it to me. And then I go there and then she says, oh, never mind. I don't want you to go there. And she walks away. I'll go to the horse that's closest to her in the herd and I'll offer the same thing to that horse. And the next thing I know, MJ will be right up next to me. And she'll be releasing and yawning and blowing out and, oh, thank you. She presented her, um, her the, you can release a horse's TMJ by putting your finger under their lip, their top teeth and allowing them to use the weight of their head to just rest on that. She started presenting that a bunch to me last summer. And her boyfriend at the time laid down while I was releasing MJ's TMJ and went, oh, thank you so much, I needed that. 
So they're all interconnected and they're all working on each other. And the more I try to think about it, the stickier it gets. But the more I just open my hands, stay grounded in my heart, and see who comes by and receives it in whatever way they want to, and just observe the herd, it is so, so deeply powerful. And it builds your horse's trust in you. So the next thing you know, my horse will walk up backwards to me if she's having a hind end problem. <laughs> and people are like, um, excuse me, your horse is going to kick you. I'm like, oh, no, no, she just needs energy work in her hind end. And sometimes it's very physical. Like, sometimes she really wants me to push into her hips. And she leans, and I provide counter pressure, and it's very physical. And sometimes it's, I actually want you to stand five feet back and don't touch me at all. And over the years of doing this and learning and experimenting and finding out I tried something and she up and walked away because I clearly missed the message so much. Okay, that's not a big deal if that happens. Or I tried something and then she showed me something else. Like it's just completely unattached to anything they present doesn't have to mean anything there's no outcome there's no forcing I'm grounded in my energy I'm sharing with you do with that what you want and your communication with your horse and everything that you do becomes this incredible just intuitive knowing your intuitive knowing deepens so much it's so powerful well, it's, it's what's coming to me as I'm listening to you describe this is it's almost like we've full circled in this podcast because by doing what you just described and doing it enough with an open, curious mind, which is how we really, if you want to really advance in your relationship with your horse, that's where we have to come from. An open, curious, non-judgmental, ego silenced place but in what you described to me you're using all of your senses you're seeing how she's communicating to you you're hearing the passing gas we now we're talking about releases the Mm -hmm. passing gas the yawning I have some horses when they're new to this whole stuff they actually start to grind their teeth yep because they don't know what to do with all this stirring energy, um, the sighing, the um, your so you're using your sight, you're using your ears, you <laughs> you can smell when they're passing gas, <laughs> um, or even if you're up working around their face and they start yawning and breathing out, you can literally smell their breath. Mm-hmm. You're using your touch, your tactile, you're feeling and intuitively receiving from them. So you're using all of your senses while they're receiving the healing energy and you're allowing yourself to be open and vulnerable which helps our horses to be open and vulnerable because for a horse to receive energy work like that to the point where they're releasing in big ways. And Laura's got some pictures that she's going to be sharing um, in various posts about this, where you're going to see MJ releasing. And I think what we're going to do is start taking some more short videos and things of different horses releasing and put it on our, our Mm -hmm. private um, Facebook group. Yeah. Maybe it's not private. No, Um, it's it's our page. (laughs) On our public page so that you guys can go in there and, and witness it's not a licking and chewing, thinking and blinking thing. It's an actual releasing of of bent up energy, just like when we've had a really stressful moment, when that stimulus disappears, we'll yawn, we'll feel sleepy, they'll do the same thing. So what you just described to me was like one of the most powerful ways 
to learn to hear what your horse is communicating to you. Feel it, see it, experience it, and and it's extremely bonding. Extremely bonding. And sometimes stuff comes up for me and my my stuff comes up during it and you just have to kind of let it go. So I've cried. Sometimes I get the burps really bad or I, you know, I start yawning or I all of a sudden notice tension in my body and I put my attention there. Like your own stuff, you're working on, like what you're doing is you're channeling universal energy and sending it out to whoever needs it. And sometimes it's you who needs it and that's okay. And the horses will hold space for whatever comes up for you. And what what we teach in Reiki, and she's you kind of touched on it, is in order for us to be open to receive the energy and offer it out into the world, to a situation, to a plant, to a person, to an animal, it first has to come into us and fill our body up from head to toe out and then it comes when it's all when our body's fully received all of that then it bubbles up and goes out through our hands so the the one offering reiki or offering energy first is receiving it mm-hmm. so yes that's why we will go through the 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 experience of energy moving within us as we're offering that to the others, it's, it's just, and God, what a beautiful gift for ourselves and our horses. Yeah. You know, yeah. Stop and be present. And, and what a way to show gratitude for all that they give us. Yeah. It's just, it's, there's no downside to it. Mm -mm. But as you say that, that absolutely there's no downside to it but what i've noticed and i'm curious to see if you've noticed it when i first started working with energy and and offering up to others sometimes the energy being pulled by the receiver meaning the horse is being pulled so strong which means it's flowing through me strong in order to be pulled out strong almost kind of has made me feel a little agitated or a little like, oh, I don't want to do this. And if that happens, honor that. Take your hands off. I rub them together just to stop it. I'll shake my hands like I'm wringing water off of them. And just let that clear out and then gently go back and offer again. The other thing that I've found is it shows you where your level of patience is. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Some days you think, oh, yeah, all right. You want some energy? Sure, I'll give it to you. And then you're like, oh, I want to go do this. Would you release already? Damn it. Yes. So it it goes back to that awareness topic. And there are days when I just know today is not the day. And sometimes it's because of where I'm at. And sometimes it's because of where MJ's at. But it's not the kind of thing that you force. And sometimes you say today's not the day. And then you go on a ride. You do something else. And it becomes the day. And can you give yourself permission? Yeah. For it just not to be the day. And then that goes on to another subject of, well in our journey of horsemanship and we have a plan for the day and the horse just isn't there. Right. It's not their day. They're not on, they're not spot on. They can't connect with you in that way to make that happen. And can you be okay? Yeah. That's almost the, the, the day to offer energy, acknowledge what you're feeling. Damn it. Yeah. I wanted this to happen so bad. I've even caught myself forcing it. That's how bad I wanted it. But <laughs> like all the horses are plastered against the side of the paddocks, trying to get as far away from you as possible. Your horse's ears are pinned back. They're like trying to bite at your foot in the stirrup. Yes. <laughs> that might be a day to just get off and breathe with your horse. 
<laughs> you know, and maybe give them, you know, I taught a client today um, who's got rescue horses who were tools. They're twin, they're sisters. 20, I, I don't know if they're full blooded sisters. I'll have to ask her, but they're both in their 20s and they are like inseparable. And they have been, to, if they are not sisters, they've been together since they were babies. And they have always stayed together and they have, they were breeding horses. I mean, they've gone through some hell. And I'm working with her on making the connection. And I taught her today how to just massage them. Mm -hmm. You know, like, can you find your horse's favorite spot? And what was fascinating, Laura, was to witness these horses go like, oh my God, what are you doing? Yeah. What do you, what, 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 why, why are you, why are you getting deep into my muscle? Are you going to eat me? Oh, I, then I breathed and just held. And then they're like, oh no. Wow. Okay. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're touching my leg. You're touching my leg. You're going to hurt my leg. You're going to want my foot. You're going to, you know, cause we're working on their feet. And I just rubbed along that coronet band where it just, there's so many acupressure points there and just rubbed and rubbed and they just came down and relaxed. And so my point in all of this is we, we don't think about this stuff, but there are so many horses out there that have never had anybody put their heart in their hands yeah. and just rub them yeah. from nose to tail and down to the ground. Just rub them. And if you're at a boarding facility where you're like, I don't really want to go out into the pasture and sit on my cushion and do my thing because people are going to think I'm a freak. You can do this while you're grooming. Yeah. With your horse. Yeah. It doesn't have to look like anything other than quiet petting. Yeah. Yeah. And the grooming process. Yeah. It, it It's just fascinating. Yeah. We could talk all day about this. We could. But for now, we you guys, I'm going to clip Cindy's explanation of the Reiki exercise and put it into a downloadable for you so that the first time you go do this with your horse, you can put it in your headphones if you want to and do it in the presence of your horse. The link to it will be in the show notes. So if you want that, snag it. Um, that is our heartfelt gift. Yes. And our horse's heartfelt gift yes. from all of us to all of you and your horses. Yeah. And we want you to use it and we want to hear how it goes. But that is your challenge. That is your takeaway for this episode is go awaken your heart energy in your hands in the presence of your horse and be completely open to whatever happens. Allow the two of you to feel the energy. Yeah. Open to receive. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to this episode on our podcast. I want to remind you that we'll be here every second and fourth Tuesday of the month following the golden rule. That's the plan, but we are always willing to be flexible. If you want to connect with either one of us, you can do so by finding me on Facebook, my Facebook group, Unbridled Reflections. And you can find Laura on Instagram. She's known as the Homestead Witch. The links to those contacts can be found in the show notes below. Don't forget, if you learned something new today, had an aha, or walked away with a valuable nugget of awareness, you can say thanks by leaving us a review on whatever platform you're listening on.